satisfy America's need for steel. To keep up, workers are creating new steel from old steel. The tool that makes it happen? The electric arc furnace. This machine of mayhem stands 35 feet tall. The operator scaling its main charging bucket is dwarfed by this monster. The EAF is the best place to work in the middle as far as I'm concerned because the excitement level, there's always something going on, there's always something flying at you. The method to the furnace's madness? 115 million watts of electricity. That kind of electrical charge gets the metal hot. Really hot. Well, we get it anywhere from 2950 to 3050 degrees Fahrenheit. The furnace is hot enough to melt most metals, like magnesium or lead, and then boil them away. What's left is 1,500 cubic feet of molten iron in need of major refining. The electric arc furnace can do that too. It doesn't quit until it takes scrap and turns it into high-grade industrial steel. Today, the furnace must work to full capacity to achieve its quota. Turn 18 million pounds of scrap metal into usable steel. We would like to produce 8,500 to 9,000 tons a day at the plant of hot roll steel. The day begins out in the yard, where all-terrain machines tear into mountains of waste metal. Their purpose? Sort the scrap by weight into separate railroad cars. Each loaded car is pushed across 10 miles of railway until it enters the melt shop. Once inside, the crew mixes the first batch of scrap into a transfer bucket. This bucket eventually makes its way to the furnace for blasting. But before that happens, there's a method to the madness of filling the bucket. The very important, they're layering in the furnace, so you put all the heavy material at the bottom and the lighter material at the top. As the electrodes are pouring in, first coming into the furnace, you want it to be the softest material so that it pours in easily to start melting the heavy material that's on the bottom. Using an electromagnet capable of 250 tons, the crew finishes loading the transfer bucket. The crane operator lifts the scrap metal seven stories through the mill. Once he stabilizes it over the furnace's charging bucket, he waits for the cue to dump. The charging bucket is 30 feet in diameter. It's partially filled with previously melted steel because the quickest way to get the furnace hot is to keep it hot. But dropping room temperature scrap metal into the 3,000 degree molten iron is explosive. It's one of the most hazardous processes of steel making. Let the fireworks begin. Watch as the video is slowed down and tons of scrap hit the charging bucket. The effect is similar to doing a cannonball into a swimming pool. Residual 3,000 degree molten metal is displaced by the new scrap and splashes in all directions, creating fireballs. If any fireballs were to splash out of the bucket and onto the melt floor, the results could be lethal. So when you drop your first charge of scrap in, that scrap is falling in to that liquid bath of steel and slag, and you get a reaction with it, and you get flames coming up. As the scrap metal melts, the draft of the fire moves at a ferocious 400,000 cubic feet per minute. 120 tons of metal are loaded into the furnace, the equivalent of 30 tractor trailers. The first scrap into the furnace melts in the reservoir of liquid steel stored at the bottom of the charging bucket. But the junk metal at the top is not melting. It's time to turn up the heat. The electric arc furnace brings in three 9-foot electrodes on robotic arms. When the electrodes are lowered into the furnace, they deliver 115 million watts of electricity. That's enough juice to power the entire population of Tampa, Florida for three days. Our power bill's two and a half million dollars a month. The power isn't in the electrodes themselves. Instead, it's in the arc of electricity that jumps between them. Each electrode is separated by a gas, the air we breathe. 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. The graphite conducts the electricity, so it jumps from electrode to electrode. 
This concentrated charge is called an arc. The furnace's design is borrowed from one of nature's most spectacular phenomena: lightning bolts. The electronic charge jumps across the electrodes using the path of least resistance, the ions in the air. It's no different from lightning surging between rain clouds and the ground. The arc travels between the electrodes at 93,000 miles per second. The 3,000 degree heat generated from the 115 million watt blast quickly melts the batch of scrap metal. But the extreme heat creates a potential for the electrodes themselves to explode. To prevent disaster, the men turn to their only line of defense, water. As the electrodes charge the steel, the operator circulates water through them, reducing the temperature. To avoid an explosion, the electrodes must be monitored constantly. The operators get the temperature under control and finish melting the scrap metal. This leaves them with a bucket full of two materials, steel and junk. The junk, known as slag, floats to the top. This slag consists of any impurities that didn't vaporize in the 3,000 degree heat, such as aluminum and dirt. Slag is a huge sponge that draws up all the impurities out of the steel. Once the slag floats to the top, operators analyze its chemical makeup. It holds key information to whether the recycled steel is good enough for industrial use. In essence, the quality of steel is determined by the quality of slag. We're looking for a specific chemistry with the slag. If the slag is a runny slag, then you know you probably need to put more carbon in. The operators discover this batch is not up to par. It lacks one key ingredient that makes the recycled steel strong enough for industrial use, carbon. The crew quickly reacts and inserts carbon rods into the molten iron. During the burn, the carbon chemically bonds with the metal, making it harder and stronger. Readouts show the composition improving as the operator alters its chemistry. I'm concentrating on slag. The better slag I can make, the, the more power I can pump into the furnace, the faster it can go. Nice, puffy, foamy slag. We're rolling good then. Every heat that we make is getting sent to a customer. We're over 99% on hitting the proper chemistry for our customers. After several more carbon injections, the mix of steel and slag is perfect. To finish the batch, the guys need to dump the slag and all of its impurities a potentially deadly process that has the men on edge. During deslagging, the furnace tilts backwards and the slag is dumped out. If the crew doesn't stand clear when the 3,000 degree slag hits the floor, they would be vaporized instantly. Thanks to expert control by the operators, the slag is removed safely. Finally, a tap hole in the furnace is opened, and the 120 tons of refined steel pours out. Once cooled, it's shipped away to market. 120 tons of steel have been produced in just 40 minutes. By the end of the day, the workers will meet their goal as the electric arc furnace churns out 18 million pounds. The electric arc furnace, it makes us uh, what you do every day. You're taking something that's scrap and you're turning it into a product that's going to be used, that's going to be somebody's car, it's going to be something you're using your everyday life. The world's demand for steel will never relent. But one tool is quick, powerful, and efficient enough to turn garbage into gold. The electric arc furnace. Electric.